With the recent Diablo 4 campfire chat, we got so much more information about how things will transfer between seasons. And so today I'm going to get you all prepped and how to get prepared for season one starting today. With that said, we got to talk about what's actually transferable between seasons. And the first two that have always been the case and will continue to be the case is the skip campaign function and the permanent mount unlock. So when you unlock your mount, and I'll showcase this on my hardcore character, you are able to get it on any new character going forward, even if it's hardcore and you were softcore, and you're gonna be able to skip the campaign if you finished it. So to jump into my barbarian here, who happens to be like level 23 or something like that, I have the mounts unlocked and I have the campaign finished, and that is because I could skip it and I already have the mount. This is something that's always been the case, okay? Now, there is something that a lot of people are a little bit confused on, and this is the Renown. This is the second part that's partially transferable and partially not. But you can see here on my hardcore character, I have no Renown unlocked, and that is because Renown is not transferable between seasons and cross hardcore slash softcore characters. A lot of people were assuming that once you've completed it once, you get it for any future character. This is not how it works, okay? And in fact, this is partially the changes that they've made. Previously, we were able to acquire the Altars of Lilith on one character and get them across every character. This is still the case, but now there's an additional factor in which when you unlock the Altars here, you're gonna get the renown associated with those Altars in any future season as well. Meaning that when I start off a new character in season one, I will have immediately 280 renown from my altars, immediately giving me access to the skill point, which is going to be a really nice bonus. The second thing that they're changing is the fact that the areas discovered and the map that you've explored will transfer between seasons as well and give you that renown. For example, here, if I were to swap over to my Necromancer, who's also soft core and also has the Renown because Renown does share across characters, just not across seasons. Um, and you'll see that I don't have the map explored and I don't have the Renown associated with it. This is going to be changing. I am going to immediately get the Altar bonus for Renown, meaning that I'll immediately get the skill point and most likely the potion capacity due to me having the entire map explored and also getting the Altar Renown associated with that, okay? And just to show you all, if I pull up a calculator here, um, the Renown's gonna look, let's say in Fraction Peaks here, I have 28 Altars, so we'll do, actually we'll start with the areas discovered. You have 76 areas discovered, um, that means that I can get 380 Renown from that, plus 280 from the Altars, meaning I can start the season with 660 Renown, immediately unlocking the Potion Capacity and the Skill Point whenever I start my new character. This is going to be huge, because you can see here um, that on my Hardcore character, I did not have that when I started a new character across a new season, so that's going to be a big bonus, and I won't have to rediscover the map. Now, you will still have to discover the Waypoints, the strongholds, the side quests, and the side dungeons. So Renown grinding still exists in future seasons, and until we get more information about what seasonal mechanics we're going to be getting, um, that is just kind of what we're going to have to take for face value and prepare with that knowledge in mind. Now with that said, since we know that there are a few things that are transferable and a few things that are not, how do we prepare for season one? Well, the obvious solution first off would be to go ahead and finish campaign and get your mount as soon as possible because you're going to be able to get that across every character in any future season. That is the number one priority. After you've gone ahead and gotten your mount and finished the campaign, the number two priority should be to get every altar in the game. These are now going to be permanent unlocks, okay? Meaning that, again, you're going to get that renown and you're going to get the stats associated with it so you should be getting every altar in the game. Don't leave one behind um, just because, you know, you don't want to do it. Well, if you don't want to do it, just have some fun. No worries. But if you're trying to be efficient, you want to pick up every altar because you're going to get the stats and you're also going to get that nice 10 renown bonus, okay, across every future character. And then the last thing that you're going to want to do is pick up 
every area discovered. Now, this is a big, big change from before. Uh, again, because we're going to get that renown, we want to get every area discovered for the additional renown. You might notice that on my main character here, I have 63 of 76 areas discovered in Fractured Peaks, which is missing 13 areas, which equates to 65 renown. So I can get an additional 65 renown for any future character if I go around and find little little splotches like this around the map that haven't been discovered. It's important to note that if you create a new character and you discover areas on that character, it's not going to apply overall to your account unlocks unless you discovered an area that was not discovered before on your main character. So my recommendation is just to finish all of it on one character so you don't get mixed up and confused on what character unlocked what. Okay, so that is pretty much everything that you can do. Again, a little bit of TLDR here. First off, campaign with the Mount Unlock, which you'll get through the campaign. Second thing to do is the Altars of Lilith. And the third thing to do would be to go ahead and explore every single area of the map in order for you to get some renowned bonuses for next season. Now, as I mentioned, we don't know the seasonal mechanics, so some of these things could potentially change a little bit, but most likely not because they've been pretty adamant about how the Renown will work and uh, they've only slightly adjusted it. Who knows, with enough community pushback, we might be able to get them to, let's say, not have us repeat side quests or side dungeons because at the current rate, we're still going to have to do all those different things in order to finish off the Renown. But fortunately, we don't have to do everything, so this is going to be a big, big uh, weight lifted because previously we were expected to do a bunch of side quests on top of what we were already doing because no one wants to go ahead and pick up all the altars again. So this is a big, big bonus, saving us hours and hours and hours of time between seasons. And I think it's a pretty good change, but hopefully that was helpful guys. And if it was leave a like on the video, sub to the channel, and I'll see you all for a video soon.